today we are going to show you how to make a predator resistant bluebird box and we have Jim Moffitt here. Jim is the preserve manager for French and Pickering Creeks Conservation Trust. And how long have you been caring for bluebird uh, boxes, for bluebird Jim? Bluebird boxes, probably 30 years. 30 yeah, years? 30 years. And how many boxes do you manage? Uh, about uh, 70. Yeah. 70 boxes. And but I do have volunteers that, that help with that. So. And they're checked every week during breeding, breeding season. season. Yeah. So over these years, you have gotten to see what works and what doesn't work to yeah. help protect the babies. Absolutely. And what are the main predators of bluebirds? Raccoons are the number one predator, and then after that, probably snakes. Wow. Yeah. And is there anything else that we're trying to keep out of the boxes? Oh, even chipmunks will, will sometimes get up into a box and rob the eggs. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they're the, they're the main three, really. And then um, I think the house wren and uh, ants are also yeah, an ants, issue. Yeah, ants can be a problem for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, so Jim has perfected the absolute easiest, least expensive way to protect your baby bluebirds. Um, we have the pieces here. Yeah. Well, first of all, we'll talk about a good bluebird box. I mean, there's just a few elements that you want to make sure are part of uh, your, when you go to purchase one that, that they have. Uh, one is good ventilation. Make sure there's some good ventilation at the top. Um, the other really important thing is that it's an inch and a half hole, not a, not a larger hole, because even if it's an eighth inch bigger, a starling can get in there and wow. take over the nest. Um, and just, I think a roof that goes over top of the whole box is the best. So that way it keeps, keeps all the rain out. Um, and a floor that's recessed up from the bottom. So when rain comes down, it doesn't absorb into the floor and make the nest wet. So that's really the main things you want to look for in a box when you're, when you're purchasing. It More looks building. nice that it opens from the top. So some yeah. open from the bottom and the babies can fall out. Yeah, right? hinging it at the bottom is, is really good because you can just peek in the top and uh, you know, it just makes it a lot easier for cleaning out too. Okay. Yeah. And what are the other elements? Here? The other elements uh, with this, you have to start with a, with a type of post or a pole obviously. This is just a, you know, a fence post you can get at your local home improvement store. It's about 12 bucks. Uh, there's six feet. And this one I drove into the ground, so this is about four foot six off the ground, which is a good height for the baffle. And the baffle of this size is important because a big rat snake can, can really climb. So getting an eight inch diameter by two foot stove pipe is really the main, you know, main thing between those snakes and, and the little bluebirds. So, and you can get that at Home Depot or yeah, Lowe's. Yeah, these, or... these come. This comes separate from the from the cap. So yeah, Lowe's or Home Depot or any local hardware store would have this. These just pop together. The cap just fits inside, and you screw it on. And then whatever diameter your pipe is going to be, you just have to drill a hole that size for it to go over, which I'll show now. And that helps with raccoons? Raccoons. Can yeah. they grab onto that? No, no cool. it's too big. And it's it's even too big for a snake to wrap around and, and get up. So so with, with this, you have to get a piece of electrical conduit and cut it into, this is three quarter inch. You can cut them into two foot lengths to put on here like this. And what do you use to cut that? Uh, you can use a sawzall with a metal blade or a grinder. Okay. Even, a, even a hacksaw will go through this pretty easy. Okay. So you don't have to buy anything special. So this just gets attached to here with some self-drilling screws. These are 5 16 hex head self-drilling screws that are especially just for going through metal. Pretty easy to drive if you have a, a cordless drill. So I'm going to fasten this now. And I'm just going to let it stick up like two-thirds of the way. Okay. Oh. 
was very clear. ready for the baffle. Okay. There we go. And then this can get caulked or some tape can go around this to keep the ants from coming coming through there and also just to prevent it from you know clanging in the wind a little bit. So now we need to attach the box. So, and what does the baffle do again? It, it's kind of swinging around, is that okay? Yeah, that's good. It's, it makes it harder for, for the predators to get up, raccoons and snakes. If it's swaying around, that's okay. If the clanging annoys you, you can get some self-adhesive air conditioner foam and just wrap it around here and maybe secure it with a zip tie, something like that. Yeah. And what about, um, should that be sealed at all at the top? Yeah, that's a good idea to seal this with some caulk because some small ants might be able to get up and ants can be a real problem sometimes. Um, how did you pick the site to put your post? How did... So this is a good spot because we're about 100 yards from the woods and that's kind of what you want for you know, being away from the woods with wrens because if you're too close to the woods or some shrubby areas, you'll have house wrens that'll take over the box. So we'll show later a little trick. If, if you have a yard where you don't have enough open area and you want to try with bluebirds and wrens might be a problem, there's a little trick we'll show later to, uh, to keep them away. So. Do they like to have any, any shrubs or trees anywhere nearby? Yeah, they like a few, few shrubs and trees nearby just to, to hunt out of, really. They like to, to sit and perch and pounce on their prey, which are crickets and insects and things like that. So that's important. And also pointing the box away from prevailing winds so that water doesn't go, get blown into the hole. So um, we're facing southeast yeah, here? Yeah, southeast is the way we're going to point the hole. So that'll prevent that from happening. All right. Uh, and I guess you need something to hold the, making mm -hmm. the box closed and then open. Yeah, for, for keeping the door shut, I drill a hole at an angle and then use a nail. Just a nail. There you go. Just a nail. And the I mean, angle is good. Yeah, just to keep the nail from coming up. But you can also use a screw or sometimes okay. in the side you can get a little angled screw that you can turn. Okay. But this seems to work the Great. best. I will take the nail and put that in there. And there we have it. All set. A predator-proof, safe home for your bluebirds. Great. So um, you had said that there's a trick you can use if there are wrens nearby? Yes, if you put up your box and you have a small yard and you're near some woods, it's a good idea to keep an eye on the box. And after the bluebirds start to make a nest, you can use a piece of cardboard to come down and over the hole, which will prevent the wrens from, from taking over the box. Because house wrens, they take big sticks and the males like to just stuff a box full of big sticks. And this makes it really hard for them to get the sticks in the hole. So, you know, like I said, it's important that you do this after the bluebirds have started a nest because they'll still go up and get in the box pretty easily. And then you can just tape that on there and that, that will keep the, the wrens from, from bothering your bluebirds. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Um, and then, uh, should we mo uh, monitor the nests? How often? Yeah, it's it's a really good idea to monitor the nest every week. And if uh, if you have time, it's also good to share that data on nestwatch.org. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good website uh, through Cornell Lab of Ornithology. So you can set up your you know your location, and also there's a spreadsheet 
and every week you can enter your data there, so that way they have a large database to use for further research. But if, if you don't want to go through all that, really the minimum you want to do is just make sure the box is cleaned out every year right. so it can be used again. And when do you clean it out? Clean it out in, in the fall. So um, I, you told me last year to mm -hmm. wait until spring because they might That's use true. it for warmth, and they did. That's true. Yeah, the bluebirds, they, they have, make such a, a nice nest, and the chicks don't get it all messy inside, I'll say, okay? So if you want to leave the bluebird nest in over the winter, you can. If it's, if it's clean and, and, and looks good, then they have somewhere to roost and stay warm. Yeah. They appreciated that last week. But a lot of times you'll get a tree swallow. A you know, tree swallow is, you know, it's a desirable bird that we're also trying to help conserve. But, uh, you know, they compete with the boxes as well. So if you have tree swallows in your area, you could put another box about 20 feet away and then they can each each nest and, and not bother right. one another. Right. Yeah. But they, they tend to make a, a much messier uh, environment after, after the chicks fledge, so you'll want to clean those nests out for sure. Possible thing you can do is monitor the box every week and check the box, check to see that there aren't any, any ants in the box, um, you know. And also, it's also good to record that data there's a really great website called Nest Watch where you can input the data about the, the birds that, that use your boxes and the success you have. So. Great. And something I also like to do after, after I'm done is find a, find a stick that's about the right diameter and put it in there for them just to give them a nice, nice place to perch. It makes it a little bit more natural. So that's about it. Okay. Well, thank you, Jim. Absolutely, and thank you. You'll help keep our bluebirds safe. Yep, thanks. Good luck. Thanks.